Hello students, myself Janil. Let us begin new chapter which is soil water. In this picture you can see water is lying in the soil. So we are talking about that water as a soil water. Let us go into depths of that. Soil water. The water present in the voids of soil mass is called soil water. So whichever the water is present in the voids of soil mass is soil water. Here you can see this image. In this soil water is lying in between soil particles. In the voids we can say water is lying and that is soil water. Types of soil water. There are different types there. First free water and second held water. Now held water has furthermore three types. There is structural water adsorbed water and capillary water. So these are types of soil water. The water which is lying in the voids only but there are of different types. Let us discuss these types. Free water. The free water is the water in excess of the moisture that can be retained by the soil. So whichever the water is in excess of the moisture which is retained by the soil is free water which is free available water we can say. Free water moves in the pores of soil under the influence of gravity. So it is moving and moving under the effect of gravity. It is also known as gravitational water. That is why it is known as gravitational water. Second one is held water. Now held water is the water which is held in the pores of soil mass because of certain forces of attraction. So due to attraction, the held water is held in the soil mass. It is held by soil due to some attractive forces. So that is the difference between free water and held water. It is not free to move under influence of gravity. So held water cannot be moved with the help of gravity. Moving further to structural water. Structural water is the water which is looking like this. This is the structure of soil. The water chemically combined, which is chemically combined and in the crystal structure of the mineral of the soil is known as structural water. So it is combined in the structure of the soil only. This water cannot be removed without breaking the structure of the mineral. So, if you want to extract that water, you have to break the structure of the soil. Temperature of more than 300 degrees Celsius is required to remove structural water. So, it is very hard to remove structural water. Second type of water is adsorbed water. Water held by electrochemical forces existing on the soil surface is called adsorbed water. Now, water which is held by electrochemical forces. Here, electrochemical forces is leading to electrons, protons and neutrons movement. Right? It is due to that. Due to that forces of attraction and repulsion, these are existing on the surface. And it is not absorbed. It is adsorbed. So it is lying on the surface only. It is not absorbed inside the soil mass, right? So be careful here. That is adsorbed water. Here you can see in center negatively charged soil particles are there. And in periphery exchangeable ions or we can say positively charged ions are there. So they both are attracted towards each other and that is how soil particles are there. But in between these positively charged ions, there lies adsorbed water or adsorbed water layer surrounding the soil particles are there. So this is how adsorbed water looks. Moving forward to the electrically attracted water that surrounds the clay particle which is also known as diffused double layer of water. So just we have seen that that is also known as diffused double layer of water. Why it is diffused? It is again uh, attracted and it is joined 
with the positively charged ions and that is how it is known as diffused double layer of water. Adsorbed water is also known as hygroscopic water. Hygroscopic water, uh, you must have heard the hygroscopic water word in agricultural uh, relation of agricultural engineering and etc. Let us see properties of adsorbed water. It is having more viscosity. So viscosity, what is viscosity? Resistance to flow, that is viscosity. So it is having more viscosity, it is having more resistance to the flow compared to free water. More surface tension. Surface tension, you must have heard the example of surface tension as a, a glass full of water which is having a curvature like uh, its boundary, right? Due to surface tension, the uh, particles are getting attraction or uh, having tension at the surface, that is surface tension. It is having heavier than normal water, so it is having weight more than normal water. Boiling point is higher than the normal water, so it is having higher boiling point also. Freezing point is lower than the normal water, so again freezing point is lower. Moving forward to capillary water. So, capillary water is the water held in the interstices of soils. Interstices means gaps or linings between the soil particles. These are known as interstices. So, the water held in the interstices of soils due to capillary forces is called capillary water. So, here in this figure you can see a red arrow is showing interstices of the soil particles and the water lying there is known as capillary water. The capillary water is always under tension or we can say it is under negative pressure always. Properties of the capillary water are same as that of normal free water. So it is very much similar to the free water normal water. In this figure you can see you can see here the particles are surrounded by a water uh, linings of water and this particle is also having dots here. These dots are showing structural water. It is into its structure. For example, it is a soil particle, right? In that, in its structure, the water is gone and it is settled in the structure of the soil. So, this is structural water. Surrounding that, the line on the surface of that is adsorbed water due to electrochemical forces and here red arrow is showing these interstices and that is a capillary water. Now you are seeing one more thing. One more thing is that here there is a gap. This is a gap and this gap is showing gap with some space or we can say void. So in this void water can pass and that water is known as gravitational water or we say free water. So this figure illustrates every type of water. So do understand this if you want to understand every types of water. Let us move forward to importance of capillary water. First, the capillary water can be easily extracted by the plant roots for their growth. So, it can be extracted by plant roots. So, growth of the plant happens due to capillary water. And it is very much useful to the crops. The capillary water has a considerable effect on the stress conditions in the soil mass. So, it is also having considerable effect on stresses in the soil mass also as it diffuses the stresses. Moving forward to total stress, effective stress and neutral stress. So at any place in a soil mass the total stress sigma is the total load per unit area. So total load per unit area is known as total stress here. Total stress may be due to two reasons. First, self-weight of the soils. 
because of the self weight of soil and overburden on the soil sometimes on some soils uh, they are overburdened with the large huge buildings right so this may be the reasons for total stress here you can see a figure this figure is having two uh, different uh, parts first part having h1 height second one is h2 height here this triangle is showing water table so this is the height of water table below that if you put a manometer here or pressure uh, gauge here you can measure the pressure up to height this h2 due to water table height now upper portion is dry soil and the lower portion will be saturated soil due to water table ground water table so uh, calculating stress at point o here at o here total stress will be gamma d into h1 plus gamma saturated into h2 so basically total stress will be consisting of unit weight into height unit weight of what if we consider upper portion top portion that is dry soil so gamma d into h1 height so gamma d why gamma d gamma that is unit weight and d is for dry soil so gamma d into h1 and for saturated portion gamma saturated into its height that is h2 so that is total stress for you here i have written the same moving forward for effective stress which is sigma dash so effective stress is very simple the pressure transmitted from the particle through their point of contact through the soil mass above the plane so if there are two soil particles first soil particle is having uh, this contact here and it is applying pressure here so this uh, stress will be called as effective stress and it is known as sigma dash effective stress is effective in decreasing the void ratio of the soil mass and in mobilizing shear strength the effective strength or effective stress can be written as sigma dash is equal to sigma minus u where sigma is what sigma is total stress and u is neutral stress now what is neutral stress let us understand neutral stress which is denoted by u so neutral stress is nothing but the neutral stress or pore water pressure is the pressure transmitted to the pore fluid now the voids are filled with water and they are known as often known as pores now the pressure is also transmitted through pore fluid right so that is known as neutral stress or we can say pore water pressure due to pore water this pressure is equal to the water load per unit area and it does not have any measurable influence on the void ratio or any other properties that is why it is known as neutral stress neutral stress u is equal to in that case just we have considered that here it will be gamma w into h2 gamma w is what unit weight of water and h2 is height up to the water so effective stress sigma dash will be sigma minus u and the sigma dash can be written as gamma d h1 plus gamma saturated h2 minus u that is gamma w h2 here if we calculate that and we get h2 common here we can get sigma dash is equal to gamma d h1 plus h2 into bracket gamma saturated minus gamma w so sigma dash happens to be gamma d h1 plus gamma dash h2 where gamma dash that is submerged unit weight and can be written as gamma saturated minus gamma w so that's it for this lecture we will understand more theories in the next video thank you